So in the last video we pretty much finished up our uh, game 1 class. There's just a couple of wee changes that I want you to make here. Um, I'd just like you to move the HUD draw function and just move that up to here. And also before that we want to draw them up. Something very important that I forgot about. Okay. Also, in the map declaration up here, see the way this isn't highlighted? That's because we have to have map underscore classes dot map. There we go. And we'll see how that goes. Yeah, that's great. That moves about. Perfect. That's the way we want it to be. And the last wee thing I want to do here is just um show the user which layer they're actually drawing on. So this is going to be the very, very last thing you want to draw. So we've got a string, layer text. If you draw the layer 0, layers 1. If you draw the layers 1, layers 2. If you draw the layers 2, it's closing the layer. And then we want to draw that. That just thing. That's just a draw string function from Sprite Patch. Basic is the sprite font, the layer text, that's the position and the colour. Okay, so that's pretty much what we want to do. Okay, so that's good, yeah, there one. So, we're just going to add in the uh, events that are going to happen in the back layer button and the rest of this, because these are quite quite quick ones to do. So, if you're wondering why clicked is coming up highlighted, it's because it hides an inherited member from its base class. That's okay, it's actually it actually does give you a warning as well in from the compiler, but it's it's not a big deal at all. So in this we want to set set a eh? set the drawable there. Okay. So game one that drawable there equals zero. And so and then we want to set uh, the previous clicked to false. If I could type. Okay. So after that we want to put in the collision layer button. And that's pretty much the same. We'll just copy and paste that over. Only drawable layer is going to be two, and front layer is the last one. We want to just paste that in again. That's going to be one. Okay. So let's see if that works. Yep, looks good to me. Okay, so we're we're getting places now. So what we really want to do is create this new map form that w that I had you make before. Uh, I showed you before. So what I want you to do is add. I want you to add all these from all these components to it. Okay, I already have them made out. So that it saves a bit of time. Okay, so we have five labels map name, map height, tile height, map width, tile width. And we have a text box, and we have five. I um, can't even remember what you call those. That's not important, you'll be able to find them. It's a numeric up down box, that's what it is. Obviously. It's pretty silly. But yeah, we wanna s I just set those their preset ones to twenty, twenty, thirty two and thirty two. These are just it's just an okay button and a cancel button. So I'm gonna show you what we actually I named these. So the only one you need to know is map name text. That's what I called that. OK button, 
and cancel button. So that's pretty much all I did for that. So in new map form, I want you to double click on the OK button. And what we want to do is we actually want to declare some variables first. So declare map and tile dimensions. And these are just the same as we had before. These are public as well, so we can actually them outside the form. And we also want to get the map name. Okay, that's grand. So we want to get the input from the form when when the OK button's clicked. So what we want to do is get the map name from map name text, which is the text box name that text um, map height is set to convert dot two and thirty two then map height box dot value that's what I called all all these um, I called this one map height box this one map width box that's tile height box and tile width box so you should probably change their name properties to that um, but you can call them whatever you want it's really up to you and after that we want to set the dialog result to OK so this dot dialog result equals dialog result dot OK and that's good uh, in here we want to have a cancel button as well so cancel the input so this dot dialog result equals dialog result dot dot cancel. Perfect. Oh crap, didn't mean to do that. See that. Um so what we want to do is we want to open up our our new map button and we're gonna add in its effect property. So first thing we want to do is freeze the game okay so freeze the game 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 one dot state equals state dot freeze it stops any input then we want to create and display the new map form there it is so that's just new map form new map equals new new map form new map form dot show dialog so okay we want to set the variables from the form hopefully we'll be able to get this done in time I'm going to copy over this whole thing because uh, I'm not going to have time to type it all out oh, wrong one okay this is what um, you need to type in here if new map dot dialog result equals uh, dialog we have to put in the namespaces here system dot windows dot forms dot dialog result dot ok I know it's long winded but it's because we have the X and A ones as well so we're just setting all the game one variables here to our input variables we reset the selected tile and the draw offset then we want to reinitialize the map and if the tile sheet does not equal null, then we want to load that tile sheet again because it's because it be belongs to the map. We need to reload the tile sheet if we uh, create a new map. That's pretty much all you have to do here. It's not hard to understand this. It's just pretty much setting variables from what we had. Also, you just want to reset the the button clicks no matter what happens you want to reset that button so that you can click it again if it took that out you would click on that button again and the form wouldn't appear so and the last thing we want to do is unfreeze the game once that finishes so game, oh, game one dot state equals state dot play alright so that's unfreezing the game and um, 